Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely wife, Miss Southern Shell. Shell, it's just me and you this week. We've had guests the past couple weeks, but uh, we're back at it this week and just going to talk about what we've been up to, right? Yeah, I like having guests. I do too. It gives another voice in here to to bounce stuff off of. But hey, I feel like I don't have to work so hard. <laughs> Is that what you can take a back seat. And just yeah, watch the watch the recording and everything. We've got some new stuff we're playing with today. We're hoping our sound. We're trying to improve our sound. And so, uh, my buddy Greg Rimpy from the Barbecue Central Show. If nobody listens. To, if y'all don't know about that show, Greg does it every Tuesday. Go check him out. But he's been. I've been going on his show. Um, I guess for the past year year well you've been a regular guest yeah, for the past year yeah on the first tuesday of every month you can catch me there but he was been listening to ours and just giving us some advice because he's been doing this podcast thing for a long time he has an awesome sound mm -hmm. and um so greg kind of told me what kind of mixture that he suggested i get that for what we're doing yeah and um so i bought one and now i'm trying to figure out how to set it up i have no clue <laughs> and greg's helped me out some but i'm probably gonna have to get somebody who really knows what they're doing with this thing because to give it hands on yeah because yeah, i don't know what i'm doing i mean i'm just greg sent me some presets i said okay i could make that happen yeah i know how to change the little names on them i got you at, i'm as mike one i got you as mike two i got a guest mike and then i got a phone line I'm working on and try to get a phone hooked up to this. If we ever wanted to do a caller. Yeah, that'd be cool. I got a few people that I'd like to call. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd you like to call? <laughs> Crank call people? <laughs> no. no, I got in a lot of trouble for that when I was a kid. You should have. <laughs> Or you calling people and ask if they have Prince Albert in a can or something like yeah. that? <laughs> Is your dishwasher running? You better go catch oh, it. Oh, man. How old were you? Uh, 23. No, no 23. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can see it. A little older than Michael, yeah, like okay, 10, yeah. 11. Just learned how to use a – did you have a rotary phone? Oh, yeah. Touchstone. Yeah, all we had was house phones. Yeah, that's all and we And we would just go through the phone book. Pick <laughs> have I ever told you this story? I don't think so. We Maybe. would just go through the phone book and call random people whenever we'd get bored. But then we ran – you and your little buddies? Or? Or, yeah, yeah, whenever. <laughs> and we ran across uh, this one lady who would cuss at us and holler at us and just – Oh, it was, it was game hilarious. on. Yeah. <laughs> it was hilarious. So we gave her phone number out to everybody. Oh, man. Then you had everybody in like the school calling her. <laughs> yes. And would she yell at them too? Yes. Oh, man. And anyway. That's terrible. Y'all harassed that old lady. I did, we did. Did she call the cops on you? Yeah. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> did your mom and dad flip out? Yes. <laughs> I couldn't use the phone for like six months. Really? <laughs> I got in a lot of trouble. Uh, you should have known better now. When I look back on it now, now I see it was harassment. It's Kids time. don't even know what that is. Now, yeah, you know? they used to have TV shows on doing stuff. Remember, crank, was it Crank Yankers? Yeah, and I used to get these CDs. I remember getting them. Was probably in high school, the Jerky Boys, and they did all these voices, oh, and they would yeah. call up people and harass them. I thought it was the funniest thing. When I wonder what happened to the Jerky Boys. <laughs> You still do a few Jerky Boys lines every now <laughs> yeah, and then. Frank Rizzo. It's one of the best characters ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, anyway, what are we going right. to talk about today? Uh, we, uh, uh, I wanted to talk about a few recipes that you've done the past few weeks that you put on Instagram, but didn't do like a YouTube video okay, with. Cool. You cooked gumbo the other day. Yeah. No, well, it was football season. Yeah. And. I don't know. It's really not cold enough for gumbo, but is it ever, does it really have to be cold to eat gumbo? I, don't think I mean, so. anyway, so I decided I was going to make some seafood gumbo and it turned out fantastic. I mean, I did the whole thing. I made my own roux. That's what took the longest. They, uh, I kind of go by the old, what does Emerald call it? A three beer roux. I yeah. used to watch this show all the time. Mine was more like a six beer roux. <laughs> <laughs> is it because you were really getting it? Yeah. I was really getting it dark. dark That's what I yeah. said. Roux is about time. And low temperature. So you, the way I started, were you cooking long or drinking normal. fast? No, I was, I was drinking normal. I wasn't drinking. I was drinking. It was. It was a. Uh, I was trying to get it all done before the first kickoff, and um, so I started. I started my ruse with like um, three quarters of a cup of oil and a whole cup of flour. I don't do like that one to one ratio because I want it. I want it to go ahead, and it does help it speed up a little bit. You don't need as much oil in there, so it doesn't make your. It never makes your gumbo oily either. If you use a little bit less to make your, your fruit. And I just took it through the stages and took it to a real dark, um, 
I guess it wasn't really like a. I guess it was. It was probably. A, I would consider it a super dark roof. Yeah. I mean, it was. You know, I, I don't want it to be burned at all, but yeah. I wanted to have that dark. That's what really gives it its substance. To me, and you so, can always tell when someone burned their. Once booth. I once I get once I get the roof done, the rest of it's easy. I mean, I start with just Trinity bell, bell peppers, onion, celery, saute them. Um, I I do uh, andouille sausage in my seafood gumbo too. I, it's like seafood and sausage. And so with the sausage, I give it a little head start. I put, I slice it up thin in little cross cut sections, like, you know, half moons, throw it in the oven, put it on like 350. And that way they get kind of crispy on the outside edges. And then once I get my vegetables done, I'll throw that sausage in there, saute that around, get them over my big pot, add my roux, start cooking on it, add me some uh, King Crawl seasoning, seafood stock. I brought, um, I didn't make seafood stock. I do like to do gumbo with a stock that I make, like shrimp heads and, Tails and shells yeah. and all that. But this time I just bought some Swanson seafood broth, used probably about a gallon of it, four, I think four of those quart containers and started building flavors and letting it simmer down. And, you know, you kind of bring it up, turn it down low, let it sit a long time, let all those flavors come together. Can't forget the okra. And I hate slimy okra. So the way I do okra, when those sausages come out of the oven, I get me some uh, full, put it on sheet pan. Put the frozen okra on there is what I use. If you got fresh, that's great. But I just kind of drizzled it with olive oil, a little AP, put it in the oven too, crank the temp up to like 400, and it cooks the slime right out of that okra. Thought- it doesn't overcook it, but it makes it to where it doesn't, it releases it in the oven, the high heat, and it doesn't get like if you just saute it in a pan or whatever, it doesn't make, yeah. your, doesn't make your gumbo slimy. So once that goes, it only takes. the slime help thicken the gumbo. Heck, no, man, you don't want that slimy gumbo. <laughs> that's a that's a farce. If you eat gumbo that's slimy, I don't even want to talk to you. <laughs> I can't stand it. I hate. I mean, I don't like okra because of the sliminess. If yeah. I can eat okra, if it's pickled, because it's not slimy when it's pickled, or roasted, or I can eat it roasted in the oven or grilled. I don't like it. You know, when they when you try to saute it and deep fry it or whatever, I don't like it. it gets too. It still stays slimy to me. So I don't mess. I don't mess with boiled okra either. Boiled yeah. okra is nasty. <laughs> but so the okra goes in. Those flavors. Me- you know, kind of meld together for a little while. And then I don't put the seafood into the very end. Yeah. And you I just, you, yeah, yeah. I mean, it goes like five minutes before I'm going to serve it. I put the seafood in, turn the temp up a little bit, bring it up. The shrimp cook. I put some lump crab in there. Then I had some scallops I threw in there. Oh, you I mean, put scallops yeah, in there? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even realize mm-hmm. that. Were they big scallops? No, they were just like the little yeah. bay scallops. So it had lump crab. It had lump crab meat. Had some regular black blue crab meat. Then it had some shrimp, and then it had some uh, scallops. Yeah. All those go in the last five minutes, and then you just serve it up with some rice, a little green onion put to garnish it with, and a little filet powder if you want it. And some bread. So you got to have some French bread, yeah. Mm-hmm. But gumbo, man, that's my jam. Well, do you have an actual recipe for it? Is it more of a <sighs> It's not really. Yeah, it's not a recipe. I mean, I kind of I just kind of taste as I go, yeah. season everything with a little, you know, Creole-type season. You Everybody's could use whatever unique. if you want to use <laughs> Tony's or slap your mama's or Paul Prue Jones. There's a bunch of, there's a bunch of good Cajun seasons out there. The King Crawl is from the, it's where it's at. It's my take <laughs> on all those. It's just not as salty tasting. When are, um, your three Man. Malcolm seasonings? So you got three seasonings coming out. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, being labeled now. Yeah. We need to tell Shane to give us a, a little video of it going label. through the line. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's already done. Oh, it's already done. Oh, I mean, I it's already done. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, they should be ready to ship. So you got a Malcolm's King Crawl, Grande Gringo, and Jam and Jerk. Jam and Jerk. It's my jerk rub. It's good too. Yeah. Oh, they're all good. Um, yeah. I've been using them at home. I like to use blends when I cook, you know, and I love just having gr- being able to grab those. I'll tell you which one that, that uh, Grande Gringo on the fish. It was good. Yeah, I made fish tacos the other night with it. It was really good. And, you know, I just did those in the oven. Yeah, yeah. those were just quick dinner, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I just I put it. Thought out some red snapper we had in the freezer. Mm-hmm. I put a medium light heavy. <laughs> <laughs> medium light heavy? <laughs> medium to light heavy. Uh, no, coat. you put enough on it, huh? Put enough of yeah. it and then just put it, popped it in the oven at a high temp for a few minutes. How long did it take that fish to cook? you remember? 15 minutes? 15 to 18 minutes. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't long. Yeah. Then you just kind of chop it roughly and Mm -hmm. make tacos is what we did. And I made black beans that were pretty good. Man, yeah. Um, You also did, we also did um, the, was it Wagyu Wagyu sirloin steaks? We always say, what, say Wagyu? Wagyu. Wagyu. Yeah. 
You did Wagyu um, sirloin steak? Those. Where they come from? I don't from? know why I've been waiting on cooking those. <laughs> uh, Kevin down the butcher shop sent those to me. Man, it's been a couple months ago. It's probably back into May, Memorial Day. He said, man, I got some of these sirloins in you and try some. And anytime he gets them, I was like, heck yeah, I want to try <laughs> them. I. Put them on my, <laughs> in my mailbox. But I had them in the freezer and they were just vacuum sealed. And I was like, we wanted something quick for dinner. And we'd been doing one of these box service deals. And I just got tired of it. it was a, we were doing sun basket. Yeah, sun basket. And it was, it was okay. the healthiest of all the. Yeah. You know me, it, it didn't have a whole lot of flavor. You always have as a month. Quinoa, a lot of kale, a lot of. A lot of roughage. A lot of roughage. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so Shell said, if you'll do a dinner, like we rotate. And I was like, all right, because I got some stuff in the freezer I need to get rid of yeah. anyway. So I started cooking Wagyu strips. <laughs> like, we had some gumbo, we had some fish tacos. We had all kinds of good stuff. But those strips were in there. And I was like, well, you know, I'm just going to thaw them out. Um, I've been playing with um, kind of a Texas style brisket rub I made, and I was going to try them on those steaks. And that, so all I did was I thawed, let those steaks thaw out overnight. The next day was my turn to cook dinner. Um, what did I do with them? Potatoes? Those little. Uh, it was asparagus. Roasted and, and roasted, roasted new. Potatoes, yeah, yeah, roasted little yellow Yukon golds. And so I, I took those steaks. Because I did the fired up, my, and the fired up the grill. I cooked them on the. I cooked them on a the big green egg. I can't remember. Was it either egg or PK? No, it was a PK-360. Oh, was it PK-360? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just fired the grill up. By the time that did, I took the steaks in, you know, had them inside, hit them with a little Worcestershire sauce, hit them with that salt, pepper, uh, kind of Texas-style brisket rub, course, not super heavy. And then what, uh, when the grill was ready, took them out there and just, man, they grilled fast, like six minutes. It was it was quick. You did minute half, minute half. Yeah, flip, flip. minute half, minute half. Because they were, I mean, you didn't probe or anything. No, I was. I knew I wanted them kind of on the rare side. That's how we like to eat strips. Uh, they weren't strips; they were sirloins. I don't know why I keep saying strips. Yeah, they were uh, wagyu sirloins. And to me, what's the difference between a strip and a sirloin? It comes off different. You know, it's, it's a whole still it's cut. still on the on the loin part. It's just where it comes off, I guess. Mm. I don't know. They showed us up there. I just can't. The, the sirloin. Is typically a lot, a lot leaner, a lot more work, and it's kind of more towards the back. Okay. Getting back towards the hind quarter, comes off that hind quarter cut back there. Well, does it come from the same area, just a different mm, section? Not from I the mean, strip. The strip's kind of, you know, you think of the porterhouse steak, strips on one side. Yeah, yeah. And fillets on the other. So yeah. it's up higher on the back, back towards, you know, before yeah. you get to the, the, the rear hind quarter. So. Okay. Gotcha. So that's, okay. that's the difference. Gotcha. Muscle texture. And, and sirloins are usually a lot leaner. They don't have much fat to them at all, and if you cook them past medium, they can be tough mm-hmm. to me. But man, these the these I guess they were A fives wagyu's. Yeah, they were unbelievable, man. I was, they were very good. I, when I looked at them, I was like, well, I mean, you know, these men look a little dry. They've been in the freezer. I don't know. Then yeah. I got them on the cutting board and cut into them, and I was like, holy cow! And then I pulled a piece out and like tested it before dinner. I was like, "Sure, you got to try this." <laughs> it would melt. It was like butter. It was. I mean, it was so so good. You could cut it with a fork. Like, oh, I mean, you know, and that's where to me in this in the wagyu meat, everybody's, you know, it's kind of a, a craze right now. You're seeing it show up more mm-hmm. and more. The cuts that that are really good to me are the lesser cuts. Like you know, I've had wagyu ribeye and it's you know it's okay. Yeah, it ain't the best. I, and, and actually, Kevin sent me some. I cooked some of those, and I was like, you know, it's okay. It's okay. I, I, you know, I've, I've had it. It didn't blow me away. I've had just as good prime ribeye. Yeah, I have. I've got just as good prime from Kroger or Sam's Club yeah. that I thought was, you know, on par with that A5. I mean, a- is, five, is that just the difference between animal to animal or how they're processed? It could be. Or- I don't know. I just didn't think that the ribeyes don't stand out as much to me as, say, those lesser cuts of them. Yeah. And that's why you think we're cooking brisket. Brisket's a tough, tough muscle. And you get a wagyu brisket, man, it's just fantastic. You know, that's a good point, too. But, yeah. And, and it's just it's those lesser the cuts. The tri-tips and, off those are really good. A lot of yeah. times what I've seen, because, you know, you know, they won't top dollar for wagyu ribeye, but you can drop down and get a sirloin or, you know, get a flank steak. I don't care. Whatever cut you can get of it, the lesser cuts, you're going to spend way less money, and it's going to be on par with some of the best steak you ever ate. Yeah. Just the, the, the flavor and the fat in it. That's what makes it so good. Malcolm's tip of the day. Tip of the day. <laughs> Try out, you know, if you can get, if you can get a hold of one of those, he has some Wagyu, uh, uh, tri tips down there. Man, they're phenomenal too. And the tri tips is, I mean, it comes off the lower part of that mm-hmm. sirloin. So it, it, you know, it has that same characteristics. You don't want to overcook it, 
But the, I mean, the flavor of it's just rock. It, it'll rock your socks off. It's good. You think you can get any sirloin picanha? From uh, a white man, that'd be good. I'd like to have that. That would be real good. Uh, you know, that prime that we got that time from was Ooh, it Matador, Matador. It was really good. Yeah. Oh, I could imagine. I still think about yeah. that. The fat on it tastes so good. <laughs> well, you know how good the fat is on one of those briskets, those yeah. 89 briskets. I can imagine what the pecania would be like. And Michael, he's kind of, for some reason, he thinks that fat on steak is gross. You know, he wants to cut it off. So he really liked that sirloin. Oh, yeah. Because there was no fat to cut off, you know. Ribeyes. He, he's real picky about the ribeye. Mm-hmm. If it's got a piece of fat on it, he's not going to eat it. I don't understand. I don't know. You know, as a kid, I can remember I didn't, I wanted strips. That was, you know, if, yeah. if, if I wanted to cut a steak, I wanted a strip. I didn't want, my parents always ate ribeyes or I'd want, you know, I'd want Chicken the, the T-bone or something like that. But I didn't want, you know, I didn't want the fat either. Yeah. So I guess as you get older, you develop, realize that's where the flavor is because it really is. Well, this week we did brown sugar chipotle flanking short ribs. It's a long title. <laughs> <laughs> the title's longer than the cook on yeah. that one. And, okay, so what these are, the flanking cut short ribs, a lot of people said they'd never heard them called that. Well, that's, that's really what they're called. And flanking mean the, the flanking cut just means they cut across the bones. You know, typically you think of ribs as long bones. Mm-hmm. Well, they take them and they just put them, run them down the saw and they cut them into Go about, the opposite way. Yeah, go the opposite <laughs> way of the bone and go across them and about... You see them three eighths inch, half inch pieces. Most of the time that I see them, they're done Asian, like an Asian Korean style. Uh, there's all if you and look at really look at recipes way. on them. There's all different kinds of ways. Most of them are Asian flavors. Yes. Now we had some people chime in that they do them down. down oh, we in, had all uh, kinds of like people. Mexico, South America, that area. And Mexico is tablitas. Tablitas, yeah, yeah. That's, and so they do them. They do them in like a marinade. I've seen them before. Like we go to Mexican market, they'll have them marinated. And they'll be like this red color. I don't know what all they got in there. Probably some that's kind of pepper mash. Stuff. I bet they're real good. I want to try. So them I did. So I did do some grande tablitas. Grande gringo tablitas. Yeah. I bet it'd be really good. Yeah. Serve it with some rice and some black beans. Or yeah. Something like that. Guacamole. Yeah. But what's great about them? If you like now, if if you like steak on a bone, and then you're not the type of person that's shy to pick up that bone and eat all that meat off, you're gonna love these things. Yes. Because all. Because the way they cut them across the bone, I guess when the marrow comes out as it cooks and it just flavors it, and you got the fat rendering down over the coals and the meat, you know, it's, it, uh, what'd you say? It's, it's a little, it's chewy a little bit. It's not just melt in your mouth. You yeah. can work on it to get off the bones. It's a little but chewy. But it's so worth but it's it. But it's not, I wouldn't call it chewy, but it's not, it doesn't have the melt in your mouth texture. Yeah, it's not like, it's not like you're eating filet. Yeah. It's got texture to it. Yeah, it's and, got more texture. And that's and so then the, cutting it across the I bone. Say it's like a bad that, way. No, no, not at all. Yeah. But I mean you think short ribs, you typically cook them a long time, you're breaking them down. Braise We're them. cooking them fast and hot, so the meat's gonna be a little tighter. But man, it's so good. When you first told me I'm gonna do brown shirt because you, you well, you found these things at Sam's. Yeah. That's where I, I usually get them at Sam's or Super Low. Yeah. Are they always there? Or did you stop them? Yeah, no, them? they're always there. Okay. They, they were pretty thick. They look really good. About a half inch, yeah. Yeah. Um, you don't want them too thick because it's too, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, because you're cooking them hot and fast. Right, right. You never get them done all the way. Yeah. But um, I just assumed you were cooking them Asian flavors, and then you were like, no, no, I'm doing brown sugar chipotle. And my first thought was, oh, I don't know about this, but I've learned to just trust your, <laughs> you know. It was good. Things. I mean. They were so good. I was They're worried spicy. about yeah. They had a little sweetness from the brown sugar where it caramelized. And but when you said chipotle and brown sugar on beef, I was like, mm. but it went so it worked, perfect. Yeah. Oh, they were and good. And all I did, that recipe is on the video. And is it on the website and on the blog? Did you get yeah, it up there? Yeah. You can find it. It's a simple, simple rub I threw together. Yeah. Just poured it in a dredge and just hit them with it. And That's all you did to them. This too. was a fast, fast cook. Yeah. I mean. You could make that rub up in a couple of minutes, get the meat seasoned. By the time the grill was ready, throw them on, you're cooking them in there was no 30 minutes, there basically. There was no glaze. Mm-hmm. There was no anything. Nothing else. And then take them and serve them. And they're, that's a quick, it's a quick dinner, and they're, they're really, really good. Yeah. That's something you could cook on this weekend. You know, invite some folks over to watch football, yep. cook these You need up. probably two packs of them. I think if they're going to feed people. I didn't, I didn't look at the yeah, pound price, but I think they're about 20 bucks for that big pack. All those. What was it? It's probably a dozen or more. Yeah. You could probably, three would be a serving, I would think. Yeah. It should be. 
Depends on how much you like. <laughs> I like them. I can probably eat six. They were, yeah, they were very, very good. <laughs> There's a few, like, we ate, we ate a few then, put the rest in the refrigerator, and I think the rest I got out cold and was just kind of snack on. I know it's they really, really good when great. I start editing, like, the day or, or when I'm working on the editing. The next day or the, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday, if I start getting hungry and like, mm, I wonder if we still have some of those in the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> that's when that's, it was a good video. That's when you know good, it's good. good yeah, good recipe. You know how the video turns out, but the recipe I wasn't happy with the video. Well, I was, it was cool, except at the end, they just didn't pop like they sh- I wanted them to. Mm, I thought they looked, I thought the color of them was awesome. I, did, I will say this, you always ask me what would I do different. Yeah. I wouldn't. I would uh, probably move them a little sooner and make you get out of the way from taking pictures so I don't burn them some. Because <laughs> there's a few of them that got a little dark. Yeah. But that's some just part of like your grill. Large, yeah, yeah. I, I like it. They, yeah. We didn't throw that out. I mean, they were still good. But in the video, you could see, like, the first flip, some of the ones that were towards the middle, really over that hot roll oat, mm-hmm. got yeah, a little more charry. But by the time you flipped them and cooked them and moved them around, and that's, that's the whole thing I stress on that. Is this is easy grilling. You just flip them and move them. You ain't got to worry about them sticking to their grate. You're not going to tear up. Just if some of them are cooking faster, get them over to a cooler, cooler zone and just keep rotating them in and out. And that way, the, you know, before you know it, every five, 10 minutes, they're, they're done in, you know, half hour. Yeah. How do you know when they're done? You didn't do any internals. You know, you can tell because, I mean, they're kind of sizzling on top. The fat's rendered down. They draw back a little bit around the bones. They just look done. I don't know how, I mean, that the best, the, what you're really doing is just kind of browning them up all the way. And the, cause they're so thin, they're cooking down and mm-hmm. there's no way that you're going to mess them up. They're definitely well. Unless done. you just burn them black. That's the only way you mess them up. I don't think you would undercook them cause you kind of, by the time they start caramelizing or, you know, getting that really, really good brown color on the outside, they're pretty much done. So it just takes, it just takes a little bit of time. Yeah. 30 minutes. They're definitely well done. And I don't like well done beef, but ooh. Those That's good. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what would you say it tastes like to you? Did it remind you of steak or remind you more of a brisket flavor or? I would say more steak. It was like you said, if you like eating the meat. Like, on a, the bone. Yeah. So if you think of a T-bone or a bone-in ribeye or something yeah. like that. But a lot of times, you know, I order mine medium rare and the meat around the bone's extra rare, you know? Yeah. Yeah. This is not. It's, yeah. it's all well. <laughs> It's good. It's good. <laughs> I wish I had some of that. <laughs> Me too. That's it. I like beef, um, but those are extra good. Um, but you've done them before the Asian style, and that I thought they were yeah. There's awesome an old too. recipe where I did that. Yeah, and that was that was a little more detailed because there was a complicated marinade. And you marinated them mm-hmm. for a while and stuff. Yeah, Cook was pretty much the same though. Yeah, it's pretty exact same. I think I, I can't remember if I did that one on a grill or on the on drum. I made it probably drum. Yeah. Um, you really need a higher heat for them to get them cooking right. I, I did think, you know, they probably would be good reverse seared. Like you could start them out on, say, a pellet grill or something, get them set, and then take them over and just kind of flash brown them, on, you know, just so you don't have to flip them so much Yeah. over the hot coals, and that'd be easy to do, too. I don't know if you'd get that tarry flavor as much. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, like that. I don't know, yeah, because the, the fat dripping on the, the lump and the pecan smoke, is really what gave them a ton of flavor. I did notice whenever we'd open the egg, there was a lot of smoke in there. You know, that's the way eggs roll. Okay. They just, because you're cutting the oxygen back so bad to keep it from running away from you. It just, that's, they, when you open it and it really gets more air to it, it starts smoking. Then it goes to fire. If you notice in the video, you can see a flame up mm-hmm. on you before you know it, especially oh, with yeah. the fat rendering. If we left it open for too long. It'll that, get away from you. Yeah. Um, but I did write them. There were several people saying the Mexican dish was tablitas. How do you pronounce that word? There's a Hawaiian dish. Oh, man. I don't know. <laughs> Bulahu rib. Bulahu <laughs> rib. Asada, asada, asada style, ribs. Argentine. That's, I've seen that before. Somebody said that was in Australia, too. Asada style ribs. But it's just, I think it just means taking over, that cut. Cooked over live coals. That's probably what that means. So it's just taking that cut, different flavors. Yeah, it's, well, I mean, it's a cheap cut. It's just a way to get some flavor in it, you know. And it goes a long way. You can take one, you know, three-bone piece of that plate rib and cut it up into all those pieces and then feed several people. Yeah, that's true. I could see serving it all different kinds of ways. We had it. You know, the first time I ever had those you probably do tacos, was at Ton Den down in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. We came back from that trip. And uh, come back, so man, I got to duplicate that, and that's where I come up with that recipe for 
for cooking those the Asian style. And they're, they serve them as an appetizer. It's not a main course. Yeah. It's just like, so if you're looking for an appetizer, that's a good way to do. I appetizer. think those are a little thinner too. Yeah. That, that, that's what I've seen. The Asian style ones that I bought, I think those come from like a regular grocery store and they work cut a little bit thinner than the Sam's Club ones. I think you want them about the way they had them, but almost a half inch. Yeah. Well, speaking of um, finding them at Sam's Club, I thought we'd talk about sourcing meat. Okay. Yeah, that's always a good topic. We got a ton of questions yeah. on where we find stuff and, you know, how, you know. Because the questions I, on where I to find that cut. Yeah, that's right, what I right. Was like. So I would say always, always, when you start looking for something that you're wanting to spend some money on, start local. For, you know, for your meat, you go to your local grocery store, local butcher. If you have one, we're lucky enough that we've got a couple around uh, Brad up in South of the butcher's block, get some good stuff. And uh, Raymond's meat market, these guys have been butchers for a, you know, a while now. Thomasville and, and Collierville. That's There's one, Thomasville yeah, Tom, meat it's Thomas's, Thomas's, Thomas's meat market. I, think. Yeah. I guess they're still going. I don't know. I haven't been there in a long time. I remember but, there was a time when that was the closest and only yeah, butcher. Yeah. Yeah. And that was 45 minutes. You know, the hat, see, we we started, and a lot of the stuff that I was getting from these guys weren't just stuff to cook in the backyard. It was comp yeah. stuff. Yeah. So they were getting quality things. And you can get quality cuts of meat from them. They can get your, you know, your if you want certain brand of ribs or certain, you know, if you were going to get Wagyu, um, you can talk to those guys. But what I like about the local butchers is once you once you build that relationship with them, they, you know, it's easier to get those guys to trim up your ribs for you. If you want your ribs cut down for a box, say if you're doing a comp, or if you're wanting a special cut of something that he may not stock in store, once once you kind of know them and talk to them, they'll, they're more willing to, to order that. Mm-hmm. And then you might educate them a little bit on, man, people are looking for this cut of meat. And I have that happen a lot to where it's like, you know, I want to do tri-tips. Well, nobody in this area is ordering stock and tri-tips. All it is for them is to call their purveyor, their purveyor and, uh, and say, hey, do y'all, you know, look it up. And then they'll, so you can get a case of tri tips. And all of a sudden, you know, I might want one of them. And there's three or four other guys that come in and might want one. Mm-hmm. So they've got a new SKU that they're able to sell in their butcher shop. But, you know, just because I had a relate, started talking to them about it. So do you That's think a relationship takes. with a butcher, a butcher is important? I do. I really do. I think. Uh, and they're becoming more and more pop, you know. Yeah. Common. Well, people want to know where their food's coming from now. So you're not just going to you know, a big box store and grabbing some meat in a pack that's never been touched by a butcher. It just come from a process where they're just putting it on a shelf. I like to know, you know, I like to know that somebody's selling me something they know what they're talking about. Now, I still buy stuff from Sam's Club, Costco. If you've got those in those areas, those are always good choices for meat because usually they have a little bit better quality meat in there, I've found, and, it, and the volume of it turns so much. Mm-hmm. That you get a lot of options. Yeah, the, the price is always good at Costco and Sam's. I mean, I find pork bellies there. Um, you can get these, like these flanking cut ribs and I mean, of course, butts and, and, yeah. and regular pork ribs, uh, steaks, steaks from Sam's Club and Costco have been good to me. I mean, I've, I've used it and cooked them at. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah. I have. I have. Even now, Sam just and, and Costco are carrying prime. So you can get some prime brisket from those guys. And they're decent stuff. And, you know, a lot of times you're not going to see that in a grocery store. And typically you get options. Yeah. So you can go in there and pick up four briskets and look at them. That's why I want So them. somebody who doesn't understand that, explain, like, the quality there. Well, it's more of what, there what you're looking I for. So I, like, I do like to have choice. And that's the good thing about going to, like, one of the big Sam's or Costco's is because they have so much meat in there, you can put your hands on it. If I'm looking for brisket, I'm looking for one that the flat's uniform across it, that's got some good fat in it, but I can see it and where it looks like it may be marbled in the package. It's not oxidized, you know, that hadn't doesn't have any leaks to where air's gotten in there, the seal's kind of broke. I want to see it tight on it, and I want to see if it kind of flexes a little bit. That gives me an idea of the age. You want um, it to flex a yeah, little bit? Yeah, I do. I like it I like it to have a little flex to it. I don't want it to just be stiff as a board. Because that's but, And that's fresh. what I look for in uh, in when I go to those places, I still try to talk to the butchers there too. I mean, they're not doing a ton, a ton of meat cutting at those places, but they do do some. But what, what you can do is they sell a lot of stuff case price. So you can have them say, Hey, you got more briskets in the back. Can you bring out a box? Well, I can look on that case. I can see the pack date. It gives me some more to go through. And I don't know. 
I do it all the time. I'll ask them to bring out something fresh from the back, even though they may have some out there. Just if there's something out there that I don't see that I want, maybe they got it in the back. And so it never hurts to ring that little bell. You know, Costco and Sam's both have them. The guy will come right out there or the lady, whoever it is, and tell them what you're doing and what you're looking for. And they might, you know, have some better suggestions. And it just kind of opens up this dialogue to where it shows you you're just not settling for what's out there in the meat counter, you know. I think that's, I mean, to me, when I go to buy stuff, I want to buy the best quality thing I can, you know. But a lot of people just go and say, I need a butt, and they grab a butt. Oh, yeah. And you don't want to do that. No. You, I'd like to put my hands on the, the butts. I'm looking for a nice money muscle, uniformness. I mean, sometimes you can tell if the butt's been, it looks like sometimes they're all beat up in the package. You can see blood spots and stuff on them. I don't look for those. I want something that looks fresh, that looks like it was just put in that package and pork's a little different. You know, you want to, you want to see some marbling in it, but normally I'm just going on the uniform size of it and make sure it doesn't look beat up in the package. Cause I've cooked some butts like that, you know, cooking large quantities and it never fails. Those ones that look like they've been aged or oxidized a long time or been drugged down the road or something, or <laughs> dropped and squished yeah. in a package. They never cook right. You know, it's like, I don't know. It's, I don't they dry out or they ain't been looking it's just right. a bad butt. That's yeah. what I tell people. It's just a bad butt. So, and it happens. Yeah. You want to, you want to cook the best looking thing you can with ribs. You want to find the straight bones. You want to get the ones that are kind of uniform. You know, the average bone length is about right on the slab of them. There's all kinds of stuff that I look for on the slab of ribs. What, what do you look for in steaks? Let's uh, say you're doing ribeyes tonight. Mainly marbling. That's what I look for because you go you know, uniform you can, thickness. Yeah, yeah. I like them to be a certain thickness. A lot of times I'll go get steaks like right out of the butcher case, and if he don't have any good ones in there, I'll ask him to cut some. And I do that at just Kroger. And I talk to my Kroger butcher too. Uh, you know, uh, Chef Steve. He's a, he's up there <laughs> butcher, and he'll you know if I go in there and he's like, man, what are you looking for? And it's like, well, I need some ribeyes. I'll see y'all. You know. But uh, can you cut me some that are inch and a quarter? I'm doing some practice for SCA or something. Or, or I want some super thick two-inch ones. Would you mind doing that? And most of the time, if they're not slam busy, they'll always do it. Yeah. And they might tell me, man, you have to come back. You know, I'll, I'll cut them, but, you know, you got any more shopping to do or something like that. And that's fine, too. I understand how that works. But yeah. uh, it's it's really more about just finding somebody that, that, that cares about what they're doing, too. You know, and a lot of times... You, 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 you just, can find that at a Kroger yeah, or, oh or yeah, even a you Walmart. Can find it, yeah. Yeah. Walmart, no. No. <laughs> I'm not dissing Walmart, but, man, the only th- the only meat I really go to Walmart for is, man, they got good Smithfield pork now. And, I mean, their beef and stuff, I don't even think they got a butcher that touches it. It all comes in in these trays. It's They're covered up. They're already packaged. Yeah. I don't know. So they, they don't cut meat anymore. Butcher stocker. They yeah, that's, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. They're just stocking meat. It's not even a... It's not even, I mean, not, not this in Walmart, but that's just how it is, you know? <laughs> and there's other grocery stores that do the same thing. Kroger has a lot of meat that they don't touch. Yeah. It comes in prepackaged. I mean, you know, they're not touching their butts and ribs points, and stuff like yeah. that. Now, we do have a, um, if you can find independent local grocery stores, most of them still run a butcher shop and those butchers touch meat. Yeah. Even like Super Low, for instance, yeah. they're selling. It's a small, they have several, you know, stores around the Memphis area. I don't know, probably no more than a dozen. But there's one not too far from us in South Haven. And they, they're they selling certified Angus beef there. They're cutting, they're, you know, they're cutting and packaging it themselves. So they're breaking down primals. And that's that's where I go to get a lot of the stuff that I get. But then they're they also. They have a lot of unique stuff, too. On their pork. I mean, their butts. They even repackage butts a lot of times. I think what they're doing is cutting those pork steaks off of them. Because you see different cuts there up on the shelf, but yeah. the, a lot of times you can get their butts there that have been trimmed up already. You know, they've got them squared up, looking good in the package. So they've actually got butchers that are still working. A lot of times if we need something unique, we'll go check out Super Low. Yeah. Super, we'll get yeah. turkey legs. And- I did find, I thought this was interesting, and I got two of them. Um, they had beef cheeks at Sam's last week when I picked up have those. Ever seen beef cheeks in this not, area? Not in this area. In fact, the only place I'd ever seen them was when we went out to Matt's and he was cooking them for breakfast and turned me onto that. I was like, man. What are you going to do with them? I'm going to do something similar where I just break them, shred them, and make a make tacos with them, beef cheek tacos. And they're served for breakfast a lot of times. Super simple. His I mean, were delicious. Yeah, I can't wait to try those. Yeah. Cilantro, white onion, and that's all. A little cojita cheese. Little, little, yeah, and then a little hot sauce. Yeah. 
All you need on. He didn't have hot sauce on his, but I wanted to add hot sauce. I like the hot sauce. You got to make a sauce to go with it. That's what I'm going to do. But those are coming. I'm going to be doing that pretty soon. One thing with you um, that you do always, if we go in, and, and you make special trips to do this too, is you shop the meat department. It doesn't matter if you're That's in the, the market. Place I go. Yeah. You, it doesn't <laughs> matter if you're looking for a butt or you're, you know, it doesn't matter what, what your plans are for like this weekend. You look and see if they have some awesome ribs. You buy them and you put them in your freezer. I do. You do that with everything. We make special trips just so you can shop the Sam's, you know, or the Costco or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And look I at hear, the meat. I don't care if I'm in another town. I'm strolling through the grocery store to see what they got. <laughs> I keep a cooler with me and some ice packs or something. We're going, so I see something, I'm bringing it back. Yeah. So to me, that's a big thing about sourcing the meat is you're always on the lookout. Yeah. You got to always be looking. Yeah. Especially if you're cooking a lot. I mean, yeah. If you like to cook and you're looking for unique things, you never know what you're going to find unless you stroll through there. So I hit all of them. That's usually my first stop when I go in the store. You can go your way. I'm, you know where you can find me. I'm going to be yep. in the meat department looking and seeing what I can do. If I see a butcher, I'm going to be talking to him and see what he's got. But Well, sourcing meat's harder than – It is. Than- well, so another way that we source stuff, uh, other than just say local butchers and stores – um, I order a lot of it online. You hear, you know, we talked about those sirloins I got from Kevin down in Pensacola. It's the, it's the butcher shop down there. Yeah. And he has been getting some of the most fantastic meat that I've seen in a long time. A lot of guys are using yeah. him for contest meat. Oh man. And that's, and that's what's got him so big. I mean, locally down there, he's known as the place to go to get a good, if you want to go get some, some good, good meat, meat yeah. you know, if you're, if you're getting pork or beef or something like that. But, he didn't, he come on strong in the contest world by bringing in these A9, um, I guess they're Australian bred cattle brisket and people started using them in contests and man, they are phenomenal. Mm-hmm. They're good. And so he kind of grew his business that way, but now he's sourcing every brand of pork you can think of. Mm-hmm. If you want Compart, if you want Prairie Fresh, if you want Smithfield. Is he doing comp trims for them too? Um, I don't. I don't think so. I don't, I've never. Some, some guys will make a relationship with their butcher and get them to actually trim, trim their yeah, meat see, that's for what he, them for a contest. Yep. Uh, I know Raymond's in Memphis locally. Mm-hmm. Brad does that too. Yeah. They'll, I mean, they'll, they'll just put a little extra tag. Uh, you know, a trim little price. Yeah, you're, you're paying for it. There's but. a place that I was getting some from out in Kansas City. Um, Man, it started out as a grocery store. Now I think it's like Kansas City barbecue meats or Kansas City special. Oh yeah, meats. KC meats or something yeah, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, he does. He was doing full con- contest trim for you on your on your uh, brisket and a smart and butts. Yeah, and then they'd repackage it and ship it to you. But I'm not scared to order something online. I mean, the downside. I think you could probably get better quality ordering stuff online because you got just like a matador. Those yeah. places. They fantastic you want some really meat. good beef, yeah. Matador prime, prime beef. beef is the way to go. Ooh. Yeah, but say if you're ordering from Kevin or you're ordering from Matador or even ordering from like Compart online mm-hmm. or something, you're getting good stuff. But where they're getting you is the dead gum shipping, and shipping because it's is a heavy item and it's got to go express fast. Yep, yep. <laughs> and so you're paying a lot of times that cost is is as much as what you're buying. Mm-hmm. So it, so if you're gonna go, if you're gonna order stuff like that. It's best to order, you know, a lot at a time or get a couple of buddies to go in with you and y'all order from them. And then, then that way the shipping isn't much. It's spread out over yeah. each item. That's why you order it's, a couple of briskets. Yeah. Even Snake River Farms, you know, I think their shipping's gotten a lot better though. But we used to order briskets a lot from Snake River Farms and they got some fantastic meat too. That's another one. Um, I'm just trying to think of the ones that, that yeah. I use. Um, oh, Creekstone. Creekstone's got some fantastic beef. Are I've never still? tried their pork. I think they do have some pork. Whatever happened to Stroob? Uh, you know, I don't know. I think they went out of business. Mm. Or somebody bought them out or something. Man, those were the best best American-raised uh, wagyu that yeah. I've ever cooked. They were awesome back in the day. Won a lot of brisket trophies with those. Yes, they were very good. Yeah. I was getting them from uh, American Seafood at the time. They were coming from, I guess they <laughs> bought them there, distributed them to Atlanta, and then the truck driver would meet me over. They had a driver that would come to Memphis bringing fresh seafood every day. And I would just meet him like at Red Lobster parking lot or <laughs> something. He might be, you know, he might be up in a, in, a, in a steakhouse somewhere. He's like, man, can you meet me in the parking lot? I got your order. And it's like a, almost like a will call. And it didn't charge me for shipping. Yeah. They were just putting it on the truck. I think it was like a $10 handling fee, but I was saving so I could buy. 
a hundred and fifty dollar brisket and not pay any shipping on it, and they were bringing it, you know, from they would, uh, they Atlanta to Memphis. You know, yeah. uh, they probably still would. I mean, I don't know. Oh, I thought they told you no, we can't do that no more. No, they just those brisket quality, the quality of those troops fell off. It's like they sold the company or something happened, and you couldn't get because uh, I used. To, I was getting them uh, from Big Papa too, because he had a meat locker where he was selling his site, and um, his shipping was higher than what I was paying. Mm-hmm. But he still had the good ones, and when they, so they fell off. Like that company just don't sell briskets like that anymore. Who was, I heard somebody bought them or something. Who was bringing in the compart and we'd go um, pick it up off the dock seafood? So that's another way. If um, a lot of so Restaurant Depot or. These other food distributors, if you're buying enough, like they're, they're not for the regular, like backyard guy. Yeah. Cause you're not buying enough. You're not, but if, but if you're doing a lot of comps, if you've got a side hustle going on with the food truck or, you know, doing some stuff like that, you probably have an account with some Four of these other places. Nine. But, um, and so that was a great way to save on shipping by us picking it up at off the dock seafood, which is like a local seafood distributor in Memphis. And I mean, there was a time I had I had accounts at Cisco and at U.S. Foods, and we would had a rep and we call them up, check their prices, and go pick up at the uh, wheel call on those. And like Eric Eric mentioned that um, last week. Yeah, that you know he has an account because he has a food truck. So a lot of guys, a lot of guys do that. Yeah, when we were doing fundraisers. <coughs> yeah, um, <laughs> the off the dock seafood there. It's it's a difficult place place to go and visit oh, in man. July. <laughs> they had a dumpster. You had to park a lot of times around the back because eighteen wheelers were trying to get in there, and you had to park around the back where they dumped out like all their. I don't know what they dumped in there. It was just dead stuff. <laughs> I mean, every cat in Memphis probably hung out there. But man, it would just. I would have to get out of the truck, hold my breath, and run up, run up to the building, go up the stairs, and get in there. Man, I don't know how those guys worked there. Whoever had the job of having to. Man, the dumpster or whatever. God, that must have sucked. And everything we'd get was in boxes, you know, because it'd be like a case of ribs or, yeah, you know, a yeah. case of butts. And those boxes smelled like bad seafood, you know. Oh, man. And I hated having them in the car. They had to put them in your, in your van. <laughs> we'd load up the back of the van. <laughs> Just run them to the house, put them in the refrigerator. Yeah, but the van would smell, smell like, like... A leak. <laughs> like a fish house, like a yeah, bad was... fish house. <laughs> That was, uh, yeah, that was pretty We've gone to some pretty extreme measures to, to get meat. Hey, meat. man, when you're trying to, you know, there were times when we didn't, you, I mean, they just didn't have anything around here. Yeah. We didn't have good stuff. It's gotten a lot better. You can oh, find yeah. tri tips now, you know? We're seeing, yeah, we're seeing tri tips in the regular Beef store. Beef cheeks. Beef yeah. cheeks. I mean, just, you'd have never seen that up, 10 yeah. years ago. Bunch of different br- uh, brands of pork. I still hadn't found any prairie fresh locally. I have to, I have to either, you know, get one of the butchers to bring it in or order it from Kevin. Is it a higher, quality brand? no it's just it's just it's just like a smithfield yeah. Our, level it, a lot of it goes by the, what what's been sold in your area like we got a lot of tyson just because we're close to arkansas where they're yeah. processing a lot of it well it's um, like uh hormel is a big you know brand that we see here ibp something like that those are like commodity ones but yeah like eric but you're seeing some smithfields and you know eric was talking about sourcing chicken how difficult yeah you know we can't find that chicken that he just has at his local grocery right, store right right so, although Superload does have that Springer Mountain, I saw it yesterday, and I've gotten it there before, but now they had a pretty good section of it. We used to order they had that legs and, have, and thighs and wings. I didn't yeah. see. We used to get thighs from Springer Mountain Farm shipped in, but I got to the point where it's it was a pack of four, and there'd be one usable thigh in that pack of four, and I just felt like we were wasting our. And you end up with a money. freezer full yeah. of chicken parts that you're not. And I hate throwing yeah. it away. Yep. So. So you'd serve me thighs for dinner, baked in the <laughs> oven, and that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good thigh in the oven. <laughs> I'm doing barbecue style, but man, just an oven cooked thigh is not good to eat. They were good. So, you know, something else that's become popular now because our friend Dustin and Jay have been talking about is buying whole cows. Yeah, or like buying shares. a portion. Yeah, I've seen guys do. It. I hadn't done it yet just because I don't have the room. we don't we don't have the room. Yeah, if I had a freezer dedicated to it, I got. Whole deers cut up in mine, <laughs> <laughs> but I, there's that's kind of a big thing because I think people are like like I mentioned earlier, people are um, want to know where want to know where their food came from, and so they know they can go to this farm or wherever these guys have raised these cows or pigs or whatever animal it is, and when it comes time for them to harvest them, 
they take them and have them cut up in a process and they're processed it your way. You make your appointment time where you're going to go pick them up and, and Dustin will take two or three coolers and go up there and pick up ground beef, steaks, roast, you know, any cuts he wants for all. And he says it'll last him a whole year. Yeah. And you might spend, I don't know. I think he told me, I can't remember exactly how much it was. I think it was like 1400 bucks or 1200 bucks. But he said it's, he didn't have to, it's a higher quality meal. He wouldn't have to have, buy beef all year. Yeah. And, and it's so a whole year's worth. Yeah. If that, I, I like the idea of that. Mm-hmm. And especially, you know, with, with, uh, pork or, or beef. I think those two, those two things where you know you're using a lot of it and you got a place to store it. That's the main thing. You got to have a place to store it. Yeah. But it, um, you know where it came from. It's gotten the quality of it so much better. Yeah. It just tastes like my buddy Charles at the co op. He's gave me several, uh, several different packs and different cuts of meat from a cow that, that a buddy of his had done that way. And it just has such a better taste. I mean, I, you, you think that, I mean, you know, the supermarket stuff, oh, it's, you know, it's not going to taste any better than that. But, man, it's... it's it, you can tell a big yeah, difference. Yeah, big difference. Huge yeah. difference. I guess it doesn't have all the preservatives or the stuff they're putting in cattle feed for just, you know, mass consumption. Yeah. It's like those birds... It's got to be better for you, right? Yeah. It's like those chickens you've been buying from Kroger. Those are just... No <laughs> way those, they just don't look right. <laughs> they're chickens. <laughs> They're monster chickens. <laughs> they are. They're five, They're huge. <laughs> yeah, but that's the average weight up there. It's not like you went and saw yeah. that big chicken. Yeah, no, that's just how they come. <laughs> you know, steroided up. You think they're steroided up? And... <laughs> <laughs> Been working out. <laughs> they can't fly. They just stand there, have little bitty heads on top of them. <laughs> can't move. <laughs> Poor little chickens. Poor little delicious chickens. They are. Um, you they know, so good. <laughs> The um, there's a website like is it called Crowd Cow where it kind of takes that principle and puts it. You I've know, seen that, yeah, yeah, where you can. I'm not really sure what they do. Is it like you you go in, like I, several people go in, they say, okay, we got a cow, and then I think you so. Get four or five people to go in and buy parts of it, or I checked you get it out, like allocated so much or something like that. I checked it out when it first came around, and it was like we have this cow from this farm, and you can kind of get information on it, yeah, and um, buy you know, portions or whatever. I don't know how it's evolved over the years. Cause that's been yeah. a while since I've looked at it. So yeah, I've, so I've recently seen that, that name mentioned. I know there's a, um, there's a farmer down in Oxford doing that. Like he, he raises pigs and you go in and you, you know, you put your money up, whatever it is, deposit or whatever at the beginning. And so this pig, you know, that's out there, uh, you know, eating and getting fat. Yeah. He's, he's your pig. And then when it comes time to slaughter him, that's, you know, you go get your meat. That's cool. And you get a quarter of it or half However of it or how much ever of it you want. But it's kind of like that's your share. Yeah. And that way you know. I don't know, I don't know what happens What happens to them if they die. Yeah. Is that, or something I mean, goes I'm wrong sure with them. I'm sure there's some type of. You get your money back? Yeah. <laughs> He'll give you another one? He probably has a few extra growing just in case. Probably so. <laughs> we got something for you. <laughs> I We're like the to... idea of knowing where it comes from. Yeah, I, mean, I do too. It kind of. You, you, there's, there's no doubt that pork tastes better. You look at the heritage bread, it's raised amazing. pork. It's yeah, it's totally different tasting yeah. than anything you get at the grocery store. Especially like in the ribs, you can really taste it in the ribs. Mm-hmm. Stuff like the pork butt, you know, it's. I think it makes better sausage, even. Yeah. You can grind it up. I mean, it's just better tasting. So, um, what co- what cut in the past has been hard for you to find? What's the hardest c- cut? You took I mean, the longest was probably those plate ribs. And everybody asked me, where'd you get them? Nobody knew what those were around here. And I had been to stores and did research and had, these hey, are the big monster ribs. Yeah. The, yeah dino B ribs. Yeah. Beef ribs. I mean, yeah. And so I've always seen, you know, there's always been short ribs in grocery store, mm-hmm. but I guess butchers didn't know that barbecue guys were looking for those around here in Texas. It's a common thing. And so I had, you know, done some research on them, figured out that they were called like one, two, three A's and tried to get the, the proper, numbered for them to order them and they said well, we don't know what you're talking about <laughs> you know, <that> like, <laughs> uh, we don't have numbers like that i can ask and it never never amount to anything and so you couldn't really buy them nobody was selling them online at that time or i couldn't find any i was looking googling everything i could think of and the only place that i know you could get them was over in texas but when i went to the grocery store one day and i saw them back there working on some meat at kroger and they were, the guy was putting out packs of those little short ribs and i asked him i was like man uh did y'all cut these back there He's like, yeah, yeah, we cut them up every time they come in. They come in by the case, you know, pack three bones to a section. I said, can I see those? You got any more? 
He's like, yeah, I got some more. And he went back there and brought them out. And it was just the dino bones that I wanted. And I was like, man, this is exactly what I've been you know, looking for and asking about. He said, why do you want these? They're cut <laughs> up over here. And I said, and I, so I said, I said, well, man, I'm going to buy this. He said, you got to buy the whole pack. They didn't want to split them up. Yeah. He said he couldn't sell them. I don't know. He just wanted me to buy the big pack. And they were kind of expensive for a big pack. Well, I bought them and cooked them and then took him back up to something. He's like, man, these are awesome. <laughs> and then so now you see them being sold and people yeah. are selling them. But there's still a lot of places where they don't. And guys ask us all the time, where can I you get them? I can't find them. them. Yeah, yeah. And just that was the hardest thing to source. But you just got to go ask that butcher. First, look at the meat counter and see if you see short ribs. And if you see the little, the little you know, three or four inch sections of short ribs, they're usually in a little tray, four or five pieces. They probably have them. And then you just have to ask them. Then you have to catch them before the day they cut them up. Because the guy told me a lot of times they come in, they just cut them up, put them out. And that's yeah. it. Because they don't try to sell them yeah. in a big pack. So you got to be diligent. I've even that's seen, yeah. They've even had some at Sam's here lately, but they already had them cut. That was weird, I thought. What do it was you like mean? Big, they were just individual ones. I never bought them and cooked uh, them like that, but I guess they cut them. Because Sam's has to have them. They're cutting those flanking ribs there. Yeah. So. Um. Now, there's a That's difference in the four-bone piece and the three-bone piece where it comes off. And I saw, and it was introduced to all this when we went up to the CAB thing where they were breaking down cows. And for the life of me, I can't remember. That's a lot of information. I know the three-bone piece one is the one you want, but the four-bone piece one's all right. It just depends <laughs> on where it comes off, how they break it out of there, and how much meat's left on it. But they're both really good. Yeah. I mean, they're, I, I, I've cooked both. I've cooked the three-bone short rib, and I've cooked the four-bone. Plate rib, I guess. One of them's plate, one of them's short. I don't, however they call it. I don't know. Somebody can correct us on that, I'm sure. Yeah. I need to bring CAB guy, Definitely. Jeff Michael, or somebody from there to come in and I talk to him. Yeah, with, uh, yeah with I want to go up there and do some filming. I found it very, very interesting, but it was so much information. It's so quickly. It was yeah. hard to absorb it all, you know. But um, and That's how I found out Superlow is the only one around here selling CAB. Yeah. Because you don't see it. I, mean, I didn't realize how important. A lot of people will slap Angus, Black Angus on their yeah. yeah on their meat or on a sticker or something, but it's not certified Angus beef brand. And the cert- <clears> to <throat> be certified Angus beef, you have to jump through a lot of. You have to have food. high quality cow. Yeah. Yep. Um, are there any cuts right now that you're kind of trying to source but haven't found? Mm. The beef cheeks was on there. Beef cheeks was on my list. Chuck roll. That's one that I've got that I've got on my radar that I'm going to do. Beef Just shoulder a, part. Like a whole show. Uh, that's a big piece of meat. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> I've seen it at Sam's before around the holidays. Or I'll tell you where I've seen it too is Restaurant Depot. I thought that they. But I've never seen the ch- I don't think I've seen the chuck roll there. I asked the guy at Super Low if he could get me a chuck roll. What he He's like, yeah, I just need to give him you know, a little heads up. Oh, okay. We can do that for holiday. Recipe. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to do one. I've been wanting to do some. So that's that's probably going to be something that's coming up. Uh, what about sourcing fish and other seafood? Do you have any secrets for that? No, and I don't buy a ton of seafood around here because I don't get it unless I go to the coast. I mean, to, to me, seafood is one of those things. Now, with I mean, shipping and overnight flights and everything. Now that the, the way FedEx moves meat, you can get some fresh stuff if you're landlocked, but a lot of times, I mean, I don't, I don't like to, it's a gamble to me. Yeah. <clears throat> like when I go to say Sam's or Kroger and I pick out some, I've gotten some fantastic out of the, the fish counter, but then I've got some that was just horrible. I, I had to spit it out. It was yeah. terrible. And so I think it's a gamble. I mean, with fish, you're better off going somewhere near the water and getting it that day. <clears throat> I've never tried to buy fish online and have it shipped to me either. I don't know how that would work out. <laughs> uh, have you, I mean, have you, we've gotten fish in those box services. Yeah. And sometimes they'll knock, like we were doing we some good ones. Yeah. I remember one time it was some, man, what kind of fish was that? It's slipping my mind now. I wouldn't flounder. It was, it was some kind of cod, Alaskan cod or something like that. And it, when you opened the box, it just run me out of the kitchen. I was like, <laughs> Oh God, we're not going to beat this. <laughs> And you cooked it, it wasn't that bad. It didn't taste fishy, but, man, it sure smelled bad. So I just don't know. I don't know about shipping fish. Man. You're just weird about fish. Yeah. I want it to be fresh. I don't want it to yeah. smell like fish. I don't want it to taste like fish. I want it just to be good. You know what I mean? You know, one thing that's been... Fish shouldn't have a smell or a taste <laughs> like fish to me. One like thing... Like eating a can of sardines or something. 
That's not good. Do you remember the mayonnaise tilapia I made one day? <laughs> it's one of the worst things you ever cooked. Mayonnaise covered tilapia baked in an oven. It had some other stuff. It was like lipped lemon. and onion soup mix or something. I don't know where this. If you were just, I don't know what was going on with that. That was before. You, that was like first, first uh, going out and stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, you're cooking some dinner. Oh man, I found the recipe online. I was like, that sounds delicious. <laughs> what sounded good about that? The mayonnaise? You, got, you, you didn't get past the mayonnaise. What went with it? I mean, you could put that on anything. Sign me up. Mayonnaise and chicken. Mayonnaise and shrimp. Mayonnaise and... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you remember... That ain't good. <laughs> the hardest thing, that's, uh, the thing that's been the hardest for us to source lately has been that uncut bacon. Man, you can't find it anywhere. <laughs> I have asked and asked at Sam's about it because I would I mean, when I did it, I, I, would, I told everybody, I got it at Sam's. Yeah. You can't find that stuff anywhere. <laughs> right, spray and bacon. Send us a letter thanking us for doing it. I asked that lady. I was like, yeah, where can we get this bacon out? Oh, well, you know, it's in a shortage and we're going to get it yeah. back out. It hadn't been back since. That was an awesome product. And so and it's sold out nationwide. Yeah. I guess. I hadn't, if anybody knows where you can get it, please let us know. Yeah. Because I want some more bacon burning. Yeah, I know. It was too easy, wasn't it? But any other tips for sourcing meat that you've um, learned over the years? Well, I just think start local. That's the main thing. Start local. Always talk to your butchers. Always be looking. Grocery store stuff's okay. Just put your eyes on it. Use common sense when you're buying at a grocery store. Look for marbling. Look for uniform size. Uh, don't be scared to order online. Yeah, you're going to pay more for it, but they're bringing it to your door. And a lot of times that's premium meat. So reserve that for special occasions or, you know, if you're doing comps, you really want to win, you probably need to cook, <laughs> cook something. Unfortunately, I mean, that's the way Unfortunately, that's the way it's going. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's just how it's going. If I'm doing a comp, you better bet I'm cooking one of those A9 hand-selected Wagyu's from Kevin. And that's the thing about him down there. Check him out because he's picking briskets out for you. Yeah. And so he's like the stuff that he gets that, that he don't want to sell to a comp guy that's not going to meet the quality. He's selling that in the store or doing other stuff with it. But, that, I mean, it's hard to find somebody that'll do that for you that's going to hand-select it. And, and then really if you need hair. stuff trimmed and cut, your, butt, your best friend's your butcher's, man. And a better way to make friends with them than take them some barbecue that you cooked. Yeah. Show them what you can do with it. <laughs> Once you get on that page with them, they, you know, it's, it's all right. They're going to be looking out for yeah, you. That's yeah, that's exciting. They, they'll be happy to see you coming then. Heck yeah. Well, this weekend we got football. We're doing yep. kid stuff. Celebrating. A, what do we got? A sleepover at our house. Yeah. We've got mm. a football game on Saturday. And Sunday, I'm boiling peanuts. I was going to ask, do you have any pl- Yeah, I'm doing plans? some I'm King Crawler pe- Bull Cajun peanuts. Are you? Yeah. That's a good little recipe. I mean, I ain't, I ain't, it's going to be the first to know. I've never boiled peanuts, <laughs> but I found some raw ones at, at Super Low. And I said, I'm going to boil these with some of my Cajun seasoning. Yeah. And so uh, it's only salt and Cajun seasoning, maybe some bay leaves and I don't know, peppercorns or something. Boil them. And if they turn out good, I may share it. Yeah. If they don't. Well, You'll never hear about it again. Or <laughs> 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 bull peanuts are good, though. I do love them. The best I had ones. to turn you on to bull peanuts. I know. It's a thing down in Florence, Mississippi. <laughs> Up here, we didn't ever see them. You might see the old pot in the gas station. Yeah. You know how they got uh-uh. the, the peanut crock or whatever? Those are not good. Those are, you know those come in a can. They're like yeah, a can, I've seen like them. a big number two can. Who was telling me that they love canned bull peanuts? Somebody was. <laughs> State Queen. <laughs> it was Emily. Emily, yeah. Out of She's, all the things that she doesn't like, she loves her some bull peanuts. In a can. Yeah. Can bull peanuts. Yeah. I hadn't tried those, so I can't knock them. I just refuse to try <laughs> can bull peanuts. I love but, bull peanuts. I'm excited about this. Any other plans for this weekend cooking? I'm probably going to do some chicken. Oh, we're doing a local contest here next week. Hernando yeah. Water Tower. Yep. Yeah. Um, Not as killer hogs. No, post oak Malone. <laughs> we're, going, we're teaming up with a bunch of friends, and there's going to be hot dogs. If you want to come eat, a I'm hot doing dogs. a hot dog bar. She's <laughs> off excited about that. We're cooking. Uh, man, we're doing all kinds of stuff. You're doing seafood, every seafood, poultry, beef, steak, chicken, uh, uh, ribs, exotic. butts, exotic beans, beans. Uh, dessert. So it's going to be a. 
Huge deal. Yeah. For I mean, not, the contest is not huge. It's like a little <laughs> local team 20 team contest. I don't even think there's any money involved. It's just something fun to do. Uh, support the Chamber of Commerce in Hernando, yeah. which was our hometown now. And um, it'll be some fun. There, there's oh, yeah. One whole tournament. There's, I sh- you know, I should have got her to send me, I uh, should have got Kim to send me like a, a read or something so I can tell <laughs> what else is going on. This is just what I know. I don't know what else is going on. Is there a band or anything? There might be bouncy houses for the kids. Yeah. I don't know. Face painting. <laughs> Jug- juggling clowns. <laughs> <laughs> go ask them. Go free barbecue. Yeah. They're having free beer not, there's Saturday. Not free barbecue. <laughs> Don't come down there looking for free barbecue. Free beer, free barbecue. Free beer, free barbecue. Yeah. Led Zeppelin's playing Saturday night. <laughs> it's going to be a blast. <laughs> uh, but I am looking forward to that one. Yeah, that's going to be a fun one. We haven't done that in many years. We haven't done a contest where we didn't take it too seriously. Yeah, where it's about forever. having fun. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, that's all I had today. All right. Well, um, I, what are we doing for a recipe next week? We talked about that. We're oh, not doing a recipe next week. We're not. You got me scheduled. You got me scheduled for a book thing, don't you? Okay, working on a book. That sounds good. I'm fine. I'm holding your feet to the fire and trying to get you to finish your book. All right. Well, we appreciate y'all checking us out today, and we'll be back next week with another podcast. And where can you find us, Shell? I about like, forgot. <laughs> if you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ Right on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram and Twitter. And let us know what you think about this new sound. We're working on it and hope to improve it. We'll see y'all next time. <laughs> <laughs>